Hello and welcome to a new series where I will be teaching you how to win in the endgame or how to save a game from the jaws of defeat. In this first video, I'll be looking at basic checkmating patterns with the rooks and the queens so that you can finish off a game quickly and queen cleanly. If you're already confident with these basic checkmating patterns, then please skip forward to another video later in the series as the videos get more complicated the later on in the series. Without further ado, let's begin the video. So. Our first checkmate we'll be looking at is the lawnmower checkmate. You can use this when your opponent has no pieces left and you have two rooks, two, a rook and a queen, or just two queens. Now, let's start by looking at this very simple example of this checkmate. So in the starting position here, the black king is stuck on the other half of the board. It cannot access the half which the white king is on because the rook on h4 stops it from accessing this half of the board. So therefore, we're going to start by checking the white king, black king with the other white rook and therefore because the king's stuck by this rook which is blocking off from this line over here that means the king has to go backwards this way. So white continues the pattern but this time the other rook stops the king from escaping and this is the rook on the hate file which does the checking. Now this pattern continues, the king moves back another file and as white checks the king again the king is forced to go back once again and once white delivers the final check it is checkmate because this rook stops the king from escaping. This rook delivers check to the king and the king is trapped on the edge of the board so there's no um, safe space to go and therefore the game is ended in checkmate. Now this is a very simple sequence however there are different scenarios which you could be seen in so we're going to look at a slightly different position where a small twist in the beginning is needed to win. So Unlike last position, in this position the black king is free to go anywhere it wants currently because it's not being blocked off along the h-file because there is no rook stopping it from going here. So therefore, our first move is going to move a rook to g4 and this way we're stopping the king from escaping onto the other file. So there are two main moves black can play here. We'll look at the main one. So black could just stay on the main file trying to stay as close to the centre as possible. However, now we can just carry on with our normal checkmating pattern, which we've seen before. So we check the king, king goes back, we check it again, the other rook is blocking it from going off into the distance. So we check again, he moves back, and the game ends in checkmate. So we've seen that. However, there is one small difference we could have in this position. So instead of king to b5, which we have seen here, where the king tries to stay as close to the center as possible, black could try to confuse his opponent and instead play king to b6. Now here white can still win easily, but instead of playing rook to h5 with this rook and moving it over here, like in the other game, this would actually be check and black could just this wouldn't be check, sorry, and black could just move his king here anyway, so it wouldn't make much of a difference and would just be a move slower than the alternative. Therefore, the best move in this position is to actually stop the king from escaping to this line over here. And um, the best move to do that is to play rook to g5. And now the king cannot escape onto these squares on a5, b5, and c5 because the rook stops it from escaping. And now if white, black wants to carry on moving the king up to c7 to carry on confusing white, white can carry on doing this. And if black does it even more, then white has black trapped on the final rank and he's going to check make the next move. So therefore black may as well try to stay on the same rank. And then we can do the normal check mating pass, which we've already seen. And I did mention that black could try play king c7 after which we just play this move and that move and it would be end for black. So whatever black tries, if he moves forward when he's not in check, we can just block him off further and otherwise we can carry on our normal pattern, which we've already seen. So now that we've seen that position, we do have to realize that that was quite a simple position and there are also some traps in this uh, position. So here we go. Now the only difference with this position is the last ones is that the rooks and the king are far closer to each other and this means the black king has some chances of trying to regain a rook. So the pattern begins as normal with white playing rook d6 check. Oops, sorry, I got the wrong board up. So white plays rook to d6 check and the king is forced to go forward as it's blocked off by the two rooks, so king to c7. However, this sets a trap. If white attempts to carry on like normal and plays rook to e7 check to further block the king off, so here, and white's no, white has been taught that you need to block the king off, you need to check him and the other rook stops the king from escaping. However, he does not realise that his other rook is actually hanging, so it can just be taken and black wins a rook. So black is no longer able to lawnmower checkmate. White isn't sorry. White is no longer able to lawnmower checkmate black, 
Although White is still winning in this position, and we will cover how to win when you only have one rook a lot later in this video, but for now that is not what is important. So the main takeaway from this is that when the Black King is in touching distance of the White Rooks, you need to instead play Rook to H6, moving the Rook as far away as possible from the Black King. So once the White Rooks are moved as far away from the Black King, and the Black King will carry on trying to chase the Rooks, then both rooks would move far away. Note that in this position, white still cannot move forwards because the king would then take the rook, so that still does not work. So white has to move rook g5, and now we can do another check, driving the king even further backwards. However, the black king has been very active and annoying, so once again, we cannot deliver a check on h8 because white would sim black would simply take the rook on g7. So we have to move all the way to the other row again, Black chases the other rook, we move to the other side, and finally we can checkmate black. So, a similar idea to previous positions, but unfortunately black has been chasing our rooks and it takes a bit longer as we have to shift our rooks from side to side. So the main thing to take away from this position is that white needs to keep his rooks as far away from the black king as possible, so they're undisturbed and can deliver checkmate as quickly and easily as possible. Now, um, so far I've shown it with two rooks only, but I did mention at the beginning that we can also do this checkmate with two rooks or a rook and a queen, or two queens. So I mentioned that over here. So now I will be looking at positions where there is not just two rooks. So the first position I'll be looking at is perhaps the easiest position of the whole thing. So this is the two queens. You carry on the thing, but e you carry on the pattern like normal. But even though the black king is close to the two queens, the queens do not have to worry at all because they protect each other. So if there were rooks here, the king would be able to protect the rook, take the rook, and white would be in a bit of trouble. However, in this position, the queens protect each other, so it's no problem whatsoever. And obviously, in a normal game, there would be a king on the e1. I've just forgotten to add that in. But um, yeah, so in this position, white checkmates the black king because the queens attack uh, defend each other. So it's easiest to win this endgame when there are two queens because you do not have to worry about any king moves whatsoever. You can just plow on with your lawnmower pattern and you don't have to worry. Now with a queen and a rook, it's a bit more complicated. Soon as the two rooks, you could just do it as if um, you could start the pattern off like normal and do it normally. And then when the king gets close enough, you would have to retreat. Oh, sorry. You could not retreat like normal. This is why these are the most complicated. So um, obviously we start the pattern off like normal, rook to h5 check, the king moves closer, and queen g6 check, and the king moves even closer. But now the waters start to get murky and a lot more dangerous, because once the king moves to f8, we have three candidate moves, but um, only one of them is actually winning. So the main moves we have is first queen to g8 check, trying to finish off the checkmate like we would in a queen ending. You also have, um, sorry, rook to h7 if you've seen the trap of going queen g8 and you have one more move and so first let's look at what happens if you try queen g8 checks that's the most obvious move so unlike in a queen two queen endings this is not winning because the rook cannot protect the queen so therefore the black king can just take the queen and black has done very well in this position here so therefore this move is not good However, the main trick which is in this position, which is different from two rooks, which makes this even harder to win than two rooks if you're not careful, is that if you just go, oh, I see that trick, let me move my pieces to the other side, and you move your rook to a7. Oh no, the black king is stalemated because it has nowhere to move. If you think about it, the black's move, and the queen takes away this square, this square, this square, and this square, and the rook takes away this square over here. However, no piece is actually checking the king, and because the black king has nowhere to move but it is not in check, the game ends in stalemate and is declared a draw, even though white is 14 points up. So this is definitely not the way you'd want your game to end. So if we go back a bit, there is only one winning move, so see if you can find it, I'll give you a hint, it is checkmate in one move for white. I'll give you a couple seconds. Did you find the move? So the move was, in fact, queen to f7 with checkmate. Because the rook protects the queen, the queen delivers a blow to the king, taking away all the squares, which it can run to, and the rook obviously defends the queen. So the king is trapped, and it is checkmate. So you need to be careful with queen and rook versus king, and checkmating the black king. And although this is relatively easy to remember, some people would prefer not to remember it. So for the next position, I actually have a way where you can just completely forget about this, and you can play a slightly different idea and it is a lot easier. So um, what would be ideal in this position 
is that if the rook was on the g file and the queen was on the h file, so we swap the rook and the queen around, because in that case, the rook would stop the king from getting to the queen, but the queen would always protect the rook, so the queen can move diagonally. And the way we can do this is we can quite simply swap the queen and the rook around, it's not too difficult. So we can start this off by moving queen to h4. And the king comes over trying to chase the, the queen and the rook down, trying to take one, hopefully, in the future, if it can. And now rook to g3. White has officially swapped the queen and the rook over, and now we don't even need to worry about the black king, we can just carry on about checkmating pattern. So the king is getting quite close, but we can go rook to g5 check, starting our pattern, king f6, queen h6. Now previously, when the queen was here and a rook was here, the rook would not be able to protect the queen, and the king could simply take the queen. However, in this instance, the queen does protect the rook, so therefore the black king cannot take the rook, and he must instead move forwards and get checkmated like normal. So... In this position, uh, white is still winning, and he has been in every single one we've looked at. So, you have now mastered the art of our first checkmate we'll be looking at today, the lawnmower checkmate. The last thing to say about this checkmate is that it's still possible even if there are more pieces on the board, as long as it isn't too complicated. If the black king is by himself, you can target him anyway and it should work. So in this position, it's a bit more complex because you have a white extra white queen and an extra white knight on top of the two rooks required to check the mate and black has a random pawn. However, we don't need to worry about this, so the king's blocking the pawn. And even if the king wasn't blocking the pawn, our law and checkmate would check black continuously, so therefore, even if the king was on the wrong side of the board, we wouldn't have to worry. So we just checkmate black like normal using the lawnmower technique, and none of the other pieces even mattered. We just checkmated black, and the game was over. So, we're now moving on to the next checkmate. I hope you understood the last one. You can always go back to go over some bits if you didn't understand anything. So, what about if you only have one queen left, or a rook? Don't worry, you can still win both of these endgames, but first let's have a look if you have one queen left. So, the key to winning this position is to get a queen, a knight to move away from the black king. This means that the king will never be able to take the queen, but it will be trapped in a box and will not be able to escape anywhere else. So the first move we're going to make is queen to f5. Now, this is a knight's move away from the king, as you can see, so therefore the king can never go into any of the squares close to the queen and it cannot trap it. However, the king is also trapped in a box itself and cannot escape this box. So if the king ever wanted to escape and try to go along here, it couldn't because it would go into the eye line of the queen. So therefore, the queen is doing a very good job here on this square. Now, we're going to carry on and go... Black has to move, and black doesn't have very many moves, so he plays king to c6. Now the key to winning this endgame is whatever the black king does, just copy it with the white queen and you should be absolutely fine. So the black king in this position has moved one square to the left, so we'll just move the white queen one square to the left. Now because the queen and the king have made the exact same move, they're still only a knight's square away from each other, but this time the box is smaller and the black king is more trapped, so therefore the king is getting less spaces to run to, and soon it will be stuck on the edge of the board. So we carry on with this pattern, the king moves diagonally to the right, the queen moves diagonally to the right, the king moves to the left, the queen moves to the left, the king moves against to the left, the queen moves against to the left. However, now the pattern changes. The king moves one to the left, and we forced it onto the edge of the board. The moment the king reaches the edge of the board, we change tactic. Instead of carrying on and copying the king, which would actually be disastrous as we'd leave it in stalemate, not quite actually, the king would be able to escape there. But still, it would not be a good idea to move our king to d6, queen to d c6, because this would be rather pointless. Instead, we're going to keep black on the edge of the board and move our queen onto this row here so that we can stop the black king. However, there are three squares we could possibly enter this um, last row by, and our queen can access all of them. However, only one of them is good, queen to b4 over here, because of all the other squares, the black king would simply take the queen. So we have to play queen to b4, and this way the king is stuck on over here. So we can only ever move to a6, a7, and a8, these three squares over here, which I'm highlighting in red. So the black king can ever only ever move to there. And meanwhile, we can just relax. The queen is doing a good job. The king can never attack the queen, because it's got a barrier here, and it's also stopping the king from escaping. So therefore, we are going to just move our king over, slowly but surely, towards the black king, and soon the black king will have nowhere to run. So the king is forced to just stay in its three squares, and our white king advances slowly but steadily. Now, once we've reached the third rank away from the black king, we must not move any closer because we'd stop our own queen from defending. Say, say if we moved here, the black king could suddenly escape because our queen is not no longer stopping that rank. So instead of moving forwards, we carry on moving closer to the black king, but instead we move sideways towards it, so we play king to c6. Now the black king has no choice, 
both moves it makes now is going to end in checkmate. And see if you can pause the video and see after each move which black makes, how would white checkmate the black king? I'll give you a couple seconds. <coughs> Did you find the moves? So after king to a8s, then white can play queen to b7 checkmate. Because the white queen is defended by the white king, black cannot take the queen, so that is unavoidable. And the king is trapped by the queen and the king, all its squares are taken away and it is in check, so the game ends in checkmate. Now if the king moved to a6 instead, this is a similar idea, except the queen just goes to b6 this time. And the queen is defended by the king and the king, the black king has nowhere to run. So in both these positions, the, black, the white wins very easily. And it's just a recap to how it works. We start off by getting a knight's move away from the king. We then copy whatever the king does until the king gets onto the last rank, where we track it on the final rank. Then while the king is stuck in its little box, we move our king over slowly but surely. And then when the king has nowhere to go, we checkmate. So that's quite a nice um, idea. And it should work in any end game with queen and king versus king. So black does have one major trap, which people can often fall for. And this is a stalemate trap. So we'll look at this now. So we'll go through the same sequence we did last time. So we move the queen to a knight's move away from the king. And in this position, we will copy the king, whatever it does. So we're copying the king. And now in this position, if we were to, we need, the king has got to the edge of the board. In fact, it's got to both edges of the board. It's on this edge and it's on this edge. So um, we have a choice. We can either carry on by trapping it on the edge, by copying the move it has done. And this looks fine because it's not attacking the king. I mean, it's not, sorry, the queen isn't moving into the attack of the king, so it can't be taken. And also the queen, um, Queen is, the queen is completely fine when the square is not attacked or anything like that. However, this is a mistake. And can you see why this move would be a mistake? Sorry. Can you see why this move would be a mistake? That's right. Because if the queen carries on trapping the king, the king is trapped on the edge of the board. It has no moves. And like we saw, we've seen before in one position before, the king has no moves, but it is not in check. So the game ends in stalemate and it would be a draw. This is not the desired effect. So instead, we have to move the white queen to a square on the edge, which is not taken, going to cause stalemates. So that would be either here or maybe here or here. Any of these moves would be fine. As long as you don't move somewhere, which would stalemate the black king, the red squares are where not to move and the arrows are good moves. So let's move to one of the arrows. Queen b5 would be fine. And now the king always has two squares. It can shuffle back and forwards. So we bring our own king and checkmate the black king. So that's quite a nice little trick, which you have to avoid. And we're going to go on to another position where we have a slightly different position. So the only thing here is before the white king was nice and out of the way where we could just trap the king, black king with our white queen and then bring the king over when the time is right. However, in this position, the white king's in the way a little bit. And although we can just go queen to f4 over here like normal and try trap the king that way, and it would work, there are some risks that you would get the king stuck behind your own king and, be, and have to start all over again, but in a different direction. Therefore, to stop this trick happening, what you need to do is move your queen to the side which stops the black king from entering the half with your king on it. Now you don't have to worry about your king at all and you'll start the sequence next move. So the white queen won't get in the way, the black king has to move here and now you move a knight's move away from the black king and the normal pattern begins. So the king moves forwards, you move forwards, king moves backwards to the right, you move back to the right, etc, etc, etc. Pattern kind of continues. And then finally the king is moved onto the edge, so you also go onto the edge and the king has these three squares where we can just bring the king in and checkmate. So that's very nice, that's the end position. And now you know how to checkmate with the queen. So we've learned how to checkmate with lawnmower checkmate. We've also learned how to checkmate with the queen. So if you didn't understand anything from that section we've just covered, just go back in the video and see if you can understand it a second time. So now we're looking on to our final checkmate and B1, this is probably the most complicated out of the three. However, it's not too bad. And once you've learned it, you'll be able to do it for the rest of your life. So it'll be definitely fine. So the rook checkmate, when you only have one rook against the lone king. So this is possible, but requires a different strategy because the rook cannot move diagonally like the queen. So obviously the rook is also not able to defend itself from the 
uh, king. So let's say if the white king in this position was to move the wrong way, a queen, the king would not be able to be here, for, uh, first of all, because the queen would be checking the king here. But in this position, the king is able to come here and take the rook. So it's a completely different position and you have to be much more careful because it's easier to lose the uh, rook. So we'll have to find a different way of trapping the black king. However, the same principle applies that we have to keep the king in a box and slowly make the box smaller and smaller until we can checkmate the king. So our first move is a waiting move, actually. So we don't really have any moves of the rook because we'd just be making the box bigger. We can't move the rook anywhere here or here to try to trap the king here because number one, the king could just escape this way. Um, if the king moves there or there, it could escape to the way the rook's not gone. And number two, it is no longer defended by the white king, so the black king could simply take the white rook. Therefore, because we have no good moves as such, we have to make a waiting move of the king. So we go king to e5. White cannot move his rook without making the box for black king bigger, so this waiting move is the best move. So black goes king to c7, he can also go king to b6, which an idea we'll look at later. And king to b6 we'll look at later, so don't worry about that for now. King to c7. And this leaves black in a position where they are, don't really want to move the king, but they had to. And now we can use this opportunity and we can move, sorry, we can move our rook to d6. And now in the current position, the king is trapped to only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 squares. Whereas before he had a whole 9 squares. So we've just cut down 3 of the 9 squares he used to have by making the box smaller. So if we can carry on in this fashion, we will soon be able to trap the king to a very few amount of squares. And then I will teach you the checkmating pattern. So we carry on this way. From king to b7, we make another waiting move. So we can't make any useful moves of a rook. Because if we try to block the king off here. Although it seems good because it traps the king to only 4 squares. Here, here. Here and here, there is actually a fifth square the king can move to, and that is taking the rook, and that would end the game of draw, because the king cannot defend the rook like a knight, obviously. So instead, we have to make another waiting move of our king, and the best waiting moves are to try and move your king towards your opponent's king, and this tends to make it easier to close the box off in the future. So black makes another move, and white has to make another waiting move, because if he moved his rook there now the king could just escape in the other direction over here and the king would have escaped so we can't let the black king escape so we make another waiting move and finally the king has to move and white can just make the box even smaller and now finally we've trapped the king to four squares note that if black tries to play king to c8 here we do have a trick which we also saw back here on move one and I will explain that trick at the end of this position. So for that, we'll just focus on king to b7. We can make the box even smaller. The king is forced to go to the edge. If he goes to king to b8, we have the trick, which I'll explain soon. So you go rook to b6. And the king is now trapped on the edge of the board. However, luckily, because the rook is not queen and does not check the king and block this off, the king, in fact, has two spaces it can move between these two squares. So we don't need to worry about stalemate from the Roman. So whilst the rook has the king trapped, we can simply move the king round to deliver checkmate. And the way we'll do this is we need to get the white king opposite the black king while still protecting its own rook to make sure the king cannot take it. So once we've achieved this sort of position, um, we can make sure the king is stuck in the corner and we're opposite it, kind of, not completely opposite, but basically opposite. And um, in this position, we can actually deliver checkmate in one move. Can you find out how? That's correct. Rook to a6 is checkmate. Now, this is because in beforehand, in a previous position over here, the rook was needed to defend these squares. And if the rook ever moved and tried something like this, Rook here, obviously not in this position, the king would take it, but the rook ever tried something, the king could always escape on these lines here. However, what we've done by moving the king over is we have completely trapped these squares here, and the king will never escape them because the white king blocks it off from escaping. This means that when the king moved to here, because the white king defended these squares, so the king can't escape, the rook simply moved down to deliver checkmate, and the white black king cannot escape. So this pattern is quite useful, and now I've told you lots of times in the position that there was other moves black could make, which were perhaps slightly diff more difficult to deal with. So let's look at these moves then. So white's first move was king e5, and then here is when our separate moves happened. So in the game we looked at king c7, where we could quite easily block the king off with the rook. However, there is a slightly more challenging continuation where can black can play king to b6. Now in this um, 
uh, variation, the white has a problem. He cannot just move the rook here because the black king would take it. So even though it'd make the square smaller, it wouldn't work because the black king could just take the uh, free white rook. So instead, white has to play quite a clever move. He can still make black square smaller, however he has to do this quite cunningly by moving his king to d6. Now this move, king d6, makes the square smaller, but instead of using the rook to cut it off here, he actually uses the king to cut it off by using dropping off these three squares of the king and this row of the rook. So therefore the king is only trapped these six squares. So that's quite clever, I think, because it's a different way of making the square smaller no matter what black does. So black has to move and now we can use the rook and trap the king off. And then we can use the king again as a waiting move and now we can use the rook and once the king goes here, another waiting move. And now in this position, we can use the king again to make the square smaller. In this position, we can't use a rook because the king would simply take the rook. And if we try to check the king over here, then the king could just escape to this square over here. So instead, we have one good move, which is using the king to make the box smaller, king to b6. And using the strategy we've just learned, using the king to make the square smaller, the king and the rook stop the king from escaping here, here, here by the king and here by the rook, and the king cannot escape anywhere. So it's stuck between a8 and b8. So in this position, black has to move to a8, and then we can checkmate in this here. So we've seen that. It's quite, quite difficult, actually, the rook checkmate. And if you don't understand it so well, then you can always just go back and have a look at it, or even try it out yourself and see what works best for you. So the reason it's probably so difficult, I would say, is because of all the waiting king moves. But if you remember, the main thing is if the white king has to make a waiting move, move towards the black king and that will, then it will usually be fine. So in the next position, this is very similar to the ending position we had last time where white nearly checkmated the black king. Remember when the white king kind of came round in a uh, like in a pattern to come round to block off the king here and here and then he could deliver a checkmate of his rook here. If you don't remember that just go back a couple minutes and you can watch that again. So instead, there is a slight difference to this position. Before, the king was on a7, but now it's on a8. Now, you may be thinking, surely that's not going to make a large difference. White can just check me like normal. And true, white can just check me like normal, but there is an extra trick which white has to consider first. So let's see if we just play through the moves which we had before. King to c7, blocking the king off. King to a7. And now we have the exact same position as before, except there is one difference. Because the king has moved and it's on the different square, it's now on a7 instead of on a8. Now this makes a difference because beforehand, when the king was a8, it did not defend this square on a6, so black was simply able to rook a6 checkmate. However, if black was to play rook a6 check here, it would not be checkmate because the black king could simply take the rook and this would be a draw. So that is not the sorry. So that is not the best move. Instead, black has two other moves. Well, one other move to play, he has to play rook along the uh, sixth rank here. So he has to keep his rook on one of these squares here. As long as the rook is on any of these squares, then white is winning the next move. The reason for this is the rook stops the king from escaping to a6, like we saw when the rook che checked on a6 and the black was able to escape by taking the rook. And the king stops the king, and the white king stops the black king from escaping onto any of these squares. So the black king is forced to go back to a8. And now we have the exact same position after king a8, we can simply check the rook king on a6. So I did say before that it was important to move the rook anywhere along the sick rank here. So now I'll show you what happens if you do not move along the sick rank. Let's say we moved it down instead of across. So let's play rook b3. So in this position, it does not work because that king can, in fact, instead of going to a8 like he had to before because a6 he was not able to go to, this time he can go to a6. And if we're to try to checkmate the king, he can escape and we've let the black king out of the box. This means that none of the moves rook a6 check or rook b3 work and you have to move it anywhere along a sixth file. So the correct move is rook to e6 and then we'll have to king a8, rook a6 checkmate. So we've looked at all of these um, checkmating patterns and I will now test you to see how you have done and how much you have understood. This isn't really an important test, it's just so you can get an idea of how well you've done and what you need to go over in the video to make sure you understand everything. So the first puzzle I will be giving you is this position and it involves a lawnmower checkmate. So I'll give you a couple seconds on each move while you, can, while you can work out what the next move is and if you need more time then just pause the video. So let's start the puzzle and work out why it's first move. 
Okay, let's play white's first move now. So that's white's first move. Now, can you work out white's second move? Yep, white's second move is to move the rook to g4. White can also move the rook to h4. That would be fine. So if you moved rook g4 or rook h4, both moves would be fine. Now, work out white's third move. Third move is rook to h5. Now, the fourth move. Have you worked it out yet? Rook to g4, six check. And the fifth move. The fifth move can be either rook b6 or rook a6. Both moves are fine. So in this instance, I'll just play rook a6. But if you played anything, both of those are fine. And then the sixth move. Well done if you found the sixth move. It was rook to b5. You could technically play rook to c5, but rook b5 makes most sense of getting the firms away from the black king. And now you can find the seventh move and complete the lawn lower pattern. Well done, we found the seventh move, rook to b7 check, and now find the finishing move to checkmate the black king. Well done if you found that, and if you only made one or two mistakes, that's also very well done, because it was quite a complicated um, version of the lawnmower checkmate, because the rooks had to zigzag twice across the screen. So that was quite complicated, but well done if you did it correctly. So um, now let's go through this puzzle. So let's go back to the beginning of the puzzle and it starts off with the lawnmower pattern. However, we cannot play rook to d6 like we would like to because of the black king would take. So we have to move our rooks to the edge of the board, both of the rooks, and now we can carry in the lawnmower checkmate. However, now we cannot continue because the king would take our rook. So we have to move our kings back, our rooks back to the other edge of the board. And now we can continue the lawnmower pattern like normal. So how do we solve that? And remember, for the next next puzzle, pause between the moves so you have more time to find out the correct move because I'm not really giving you enough time to solve it as I'm clicking. It's more just to give you time to pause between moves. So pause the video while you are thinking of the next move. So think of the first move white can make in this position. And a hint I will give you is this is the queen and king versus king checkmate. Okay, so the first move is queen to f4 check. Now think of the second move if you can. Well done, if you got it, the second move is king to e3. Now I have a chance to pause the video and find the third move. Now see if you can find the fourth move of the sequence. So can you find white's fifth move in this sequence? Well done if you got this far and let's see if you can find the sixth move. Okay, so now we've reached the seventh move, and this is a slight change in the puzzle. See if you can find it. Well done, we trapped black king on the right edge. And now what is the next move for white? Well done if you found that move, and let's find the next move for white. Cool, pause the video and see if you can find white's last few moves. And if you can't calculate all of them, then just carry on pausing in time for the moves like we've done so far. Well done, and see if you can find white's next move. And the final move to deliver checkmate in this game, see if you can find it. Well done, and the kiss of death. The king protects the queen, and the king, uh, black king has nowhere else to go. So let's just quickly summarise that puzzle. So first of all, we got a knight's move away from the black king. And then what we did is we copied the black king wherever it went. So the black king went uh, one to the left bottom, and we went one to the left to the bottom. And we copied the king wherever it went, until the king got to the edge of the board. Now, in this instance, we did happen to carry on copying the king, but sometimes, let's say the king had gone to a8 instead of um, to... A6, we would have not copied it, but gone to a slightly different square trapping on the edge. But in this case, we did carry and copying it and trapping it on the edge. And now the king was on the edge. If you found the right sequence moves after this, well done. You remember the whole end game. That's very good. You move the king in and eventually the game ends in checkmate. So let's find the third puzzle here. This is the last end game we've done. The king and rook versus king checkmate. And it's white to move. So see if you can find all the moves. And I'll give you a couple seconds between moves to pause the video. First move, let's find that. Okay, find the second move. Okay, the second move is this. Okay, see if you can find the third move. 
Well done if you found that. Let's go find the fourth move. So the fourth move was this. Well done. Now see if you can find the fifth move. Well done if you found that. You've really been paying attention if you did. Now let's see if we can find the sixth move of the sequence. Okay, seventh move. And now we have the eighth move to find. And then if I see if you can find the ninth move, it's becoming quite long now. And then the tenth move. And now see if you can find the final move to finish the Black King off. So well done if you found the, all the correct moves in that puzzle or only got a couple mistakes, that's fine, they're quite difficult. So now these are all the puzzles I will go through today. If you have any trouble um, if any of these puzzles or you think you want to go over something, then feel free to go back in the video to uh, re-watch anything you didn't understand. Or if you really don't understand something, you can always ask me in the comments of this video uh, for my help on solving uh, something or understanding an idea. If you, you can also go onto this page with all of my notes by going to the link in the description, which will lead you straight to this page. And you can access it by going to the link and you will need a chess.com account to access that. So I should think most people will. But if you don't have a chess.com account, just type chess.com in your browser and you can get an account by doing that. And using chess.com, you can get an account. So that's very good and thank you for watching part one of how to become an endgame maestro and i'll see you in part two soon bye